Chemistry. Dynamics Chemistry. And mm -hmm. I want to get it on video and share with y'all. Okay. Back in the day of Pythagoras, he discovered the use of the golden mean as a the sweet spot on any surface to put your focal point in in a drawing or a painting and also came up with the theory of dynamic symmetry which is basically the natural order of parts of a whole that's the way it's described and it is the foundation and the basis of all art and architecture. They could actually discover one corner of a building and decide how big that building was just from that corner by measuring the angles. Okay. And Jay Hambridge wrote a book called The Elements of Dynamic Symmetry. It is now out of print, but it's a very mathematical book way over my head with the math, but I did glean from that book what I needed to learn about design. He showed how to find the golden mean. If you take a diagonal on a rectangle from corner to corner and pull a reciprocal or a perpendicular from an opposite corner, that's one of the golden means. Every surface has four. There's one here, you put the diagonal the other way, you have two the other way. You decide which golden mean you want your focal point. And that's where you want people to look first. It is the most comfortable place on that surface. This golden mean is also called the theory of the flying circles. Because if you take the square out of a rectangle and put a dot in the center, then take the square out of the next rectangle, put a dot in the center. It spirals around eventually and comes to that point. Is that the Fibonacci sequence or is that a whole nother level of design? It's just, it's just the theory of the flying circle. Okay. And it's the same pattern inside a conch shell. Mm -hmm. It's the same pattern of seeds in a sunflower center. It's a natural order. Okay. Okay. When you have a rectangle and you want to design, it's very easy to set the symmetry. What you do is take a square. I don't think I have one here. You take the rectangle and you take the square out of it. Measure here and take the square. Connect the corners. Take the square out of the other end. Connect the corners. And you come up with a series. Here it is. A series of diagonal lines okay when we have a plate the surface of a teapot we don't have a square we don't have any corners okay so we have to relocate the dominant perpendicular line and the dominant horizontal line to come up with these diagonal lines and on these lines everything should start and stop and line up across your painting and here's how we do it. Your design consists of nothing but your subject matter. Leaves, stems, shadows, and all that is, is in support of this design line. This happens to be a T. Okay. All right. I have, it's on a circle. I have no corners. So in order to find my lines of symmetry, I have to locate the top, and it has to be in the same place every time, and I run a straight edge across. Wherever color touches this line the most is my dominant perpendicular line. And if you can't just readily see it, actually measure it. Say, how far is it from the edge of that flower to right there? Is that the same as that? Which one, which one is the longest? And that's your dominant perpendicular line. And it happens to be right there on this one. Then to find the dominant horizontal line, you go across. And wherever color touches this line the most 
is your dominant horizontal line. And it's right there. And you see it from there to there is the widest part of this design. It's touching the ruler. The color does not have to touch each other. It just has to touch the line. So this would be the dominant horizontal line. Dominant perpendicular, dominant horizontal. That's your beginning cross for symmetry right there. Okay. You put a perpendicular, a diagonal line right there, a diagonal line the other way. And that's where you start leaves, stems, shadows, whatever. This is where you get the rhythm going in your piece. The, the, a stem and leaves should be on this line. It doesn't have to go straight down the line. This is a vine, so it's, it's going to cross something like this. Mm -hmm. As long as I have leaves touching that line, I'm on symmetry. Okay. Once I sketch that, I can have as many lines as I need going in any direction as long as they are parallel with this initial line. I need to get from this point down here with stuff. There is my point of reference right there. If I want this vine to come around, it crosses that line and ends right there. That puts everything in that corner on symmetry. I need to get up here now. I have an initial line here, so I can make that vine do anything I want to out there as long as it crosses that line. I don't even have to put any leaves up there if I don't want to, but I probably would. And where would I? Here's the, my initial line. Okay, that's where I would end that leaf, and it'd be on symmetry with that. But you would want to put leaves because of repetition of color, oh, yeah, too, yeah, for balance. But I didn't have to, you know. Okay. You don't have to put them. Okay. But as long as whatever you put there crosses that line. And you have a point to a point. This, your eye will follow this line down. Okay. And then I need something over here. Okay. Here comes your rhythm. I started this C. I can do this and make a strong C across this static T design. More leaves supporting a flower. That's why we use leaves used to support the flower. Right. And these don't look like morning glory leaves. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Sure. It's, it's just a guideline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that also right. brings your eye back, back into the picture and in, yes. moving through with color, line, and, and design. See, once yeah. I put this leaf here, this is an established point. Okay. I need something up here by this flower. And here, here we go. Here's my initial line parallel to and brings me right there to mm -hmm. do whatever I need to do over there. As long you can have as many lines as you need, as close together and as far apart as you need to fill your picture, but just make sure everything is, is on the line, point to point, point to point. Okay, this okay. is Stella Schilling. And for years, she has been teaching dynamic symmetry. And I want to get it on video and share with y'all. Okay. Back in the day of Pythagoras, he discovered the use of the golden mean as a the sweet spot on any surface to put your focal point in in a drawing or a painting, and also came up with the theory of dynamic symmetry, which is basically the natural order of parts of a whole. That's the way it's described. And it is the foundation and the basis of all art and architecture. They could actually discover one corner of a building and decide how big that building was just from that corner by measuring the angles. Okay. And Jay Hambridge wrote a book called The Elements of Dynamic Symmetry. It is now out of print, but it's a very mathematical book 
way over my head with the math, but I did glean from that book what I needed to learn about design. He showed how to find the golden mean. If you take a diagonal on a rectangle from corner to corner and pull a reciprocal or a perpendicular from an opposite corner, that's one of the golden means. Every surface has four. There's one here. You put the diagonal the other way. You have two the other way. You decide which golden mean you want your focal point. And that's where you want people to look first. It is the most comfortable place on that surface. This golden mean is also called the theory of the flying circles. Because if you take the square out of a rectangle and put a dot in the center, then take the square out of the next rectangle, put a dot in the center, it spirals around eventually and comes to that point. Is that the Fibonacci sequence or is that a whole nother level of design? It's just it's just the theory of the flying circle. Okay. And it's the same pattern inside a conch shell. Mm -hmm. It's the same pattern of seeds in a sunflower center. It's a natural order. Okay. Okay. When you have a rectangle and you want to design, it's very easy to set the symmetry. What you do is take a square. I don't think I have one here. You take the rectangle and you take the square out of it. Measure here and take the square. Connect the corners. Take the square out of the other end. Connect the corners. And you come up with a series. Here it is. A series of diagonal lines. Okay. When we have a plate, the surface of a teapot, we don't have a square. We don't have any corners. Okay. So we have to relocate the dominant perpendicular line and the dominant horizontal line to come up with these diagonal lines. And on these lines, everything should start and stop and line up across your painting. And here's how we do it. Your design consists of nothing but your subject matter. Leaves, stems, shadows, and all that is is in support of this design line. This happens to be a T. Okay. All right. I have, it's on a circle. I have no corners. So in order to find my lines of symmetry, I have to locate the top. It has to be in the same place every time. And I run a straight edge across. Wherever color touches this line, the most is my dominant perpendicular line. And if you can't just readily see it, actually measure it. Say, how far is it from the edge of that flower to right there? Is that the same as that? Which one, which one is the longest? And that's your dominant perpendicular line. And it happens to be right there on this one. Then to find the dominant horizontal line, you go across and wherever color touches this line the most is your dominant horizontal line. And it's right there. You see it from there to there is the widest part of this design. It's touching the ruler. The color does not have to touch each other. It just has to touch the line. So this would be the dominant horizontal line, dominant perpendicular. Dominant horizontal. That's your beginning cross for symmetry right there. Okay. You put a perpendicular or diagonal line right there, a diagonal line the other way. And that's where you start leaves, stems, shadows, whatever. This is where you get the rhythm going in your piece. The the a stem and leaves should be on this line. It doesn't have to go straight down the line. This is a vine, so it's it's going to cross something like this. Mm -hmm. As long as I have leaves touching that line, 
I'm on symmetry. Okay. Once I sketch that, I can have as many lines as I need going in any direction as long as they are parallel with this initial line. I need to get from this point down here with stuff. There is my point of reference right there. If I want this vine to come around, it crosses that line and ends right there. That puts everything in that corner on symmetry. I need to get up here now. I have an initial line here, so I can make that vine do anything I want to out there as long as it crosses that line. I don't even have to put any leaves up there if I don't want to, but I probably would. And where would I? Here's the, my initial line. Okay, that's where I would end that leaf, and it'd be on symmetry with that. But you would want to put leaves because of repetition of color, oh, yeah. too. Yeah, for balance. But I didn't have to, you know. Okay. You don't have to put them. Okay. But as long as whatever you put there crosses that line, and you have a point to a point, this your eye will follow this line down. Okay. And then I need something over here. Okay. Here comes your rhythm. I started this C. I can do this and make a strong C across this static T design. More leaves supporting a flower. That's why we use leaves, use support the flower. Right. And these don't look like morning glory leaves, I'm sorry. No, 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 your... it's, it's just a guideline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that also right. brings your eye back, back into the picture and in. yes. moving through with color, line, and, and design. See, once yeah. I put this leaf here, this is an established point. Okay. I need something up here by this flower, and here, here we go. Here's my initial line, parallel to, and brings me right there mm -hmm. to do whatever I need to do over there. As long you can have as many lines as you need, as close together and as far apart as you need to fill your picture, but just make sure everything is, is on a line, point to point, point to point. This was just a little simple design of wild roses, three across and an upside down one up here. I usually put just my flowers. Can you continue and on? Okay. Next lesson. This is the dead center of this plate. We don't have the corners on a plate or a circular tile to locate the golden mean. But if you will locate the center and go a little to the northeast, northwest, southeast, or southwest, you will locate the four golden means. A right here is the one I chose to put that flower on. This is my little T design. There's three little wild roses and one upside down at the bottom, which makes a T. This is my dominant perpendicular line. That's where color of the flower which is the design, touches the straight edge the most. And here is my dominant horizontal line from the edge of that flower to the edge of that flower. My first diagonal and my second diagonal. I started my rhythm right here with this stem for these leaves. And you can see a strong C going right here with these stems and I put leaves on them. I put the edges of those leaves supporting the flowers. That's why we use them to put um, a support color under the flowers. Strong C. And this is pointing back to this flower. From this stem, I also put leaves up here and that makes a big C rhythm. And you don't think this matters, but it, it does. really it does. does. It carries and, your eye yeah. back into the piece, so yeah. you keep it's, looking and going around mm -hmm. and in and out. And even though you don't see it go through, it's there. And then this points back to this, see, parallel to this. They line up right here. This leaf ends right, the point ends right with that stem. This ends right here. Right. From this vine, I have another 
diagonal over here, I made that rhythm an S, right there. Almost an S curve. It's an S. A lazy S. Uh -huh. That's how we get rhythm in our pieces yeah. with stems and color. Okay. So, uh, I don't have anything down here. This was my initial one. I need something down here. Here's an established point. I have to sketch that leaf in there and then parallel to that tells me exactly where to put things under here. If I turn it this way, I could have something else out here if I needed it. Suppose I wanted to put a bud or something on this stem. That's where it would go, right there, because I'm going parallel to this line. Every time you put something there, it becomes an established point where you can parallel and go another direction. This also works for your shadows. I have no shadows here. You use the same symmetry lines. You could start shadow work right in here and come out here. And where do I end this shadow? Parallel with what? Some line that's parallel here. There's a good point right there, see it? Parallel with that diagonal right there is where you would end your shadow pattern. And it would be in symmetry with this side of the page. Balance. Balance. And you just use the same lines over and over and, and over. And you do this visually, it becomes instinctive. Yes. It's instinctive for you. You don't have to do the I lines don't have anymore. To you anymore. are instinctive on that. And now. if you wanted to anchor, put something like on. Um, um, a branch or something. A That's branch to, of yes. shadow leaves, say. Okay. Start right. That's where it would start, right there on line with that. You could come in at that point, and it's on symmetry. And where would you end it over here? Maybe with that. And then you could take one up there, and that puts those on symmetry. You just use them over and over and over to put everything and people will tell me, oh, well, that makes everything the same. No, it no, doesn't. No. It tells you where to put things, not how. Okay. The how is your part of it. Did you want to take one of your painted pieces, mm -hmm. say that, and and visually have a painted piece to show? Okay. Yeah, I'm I think that, that, would, that will help versus, I'm going to pause it, and okay. I'll link that together. Okay. Ooh, show, Stella's shoulder, and I am going to, we're going to test this and let y'all have a visual <laughs> on color, and also ask her to touch on values, because I think a lot of people mm -hmm. struggle. Mm -hmm. So she said, I got this right. <laughs> I think it's pretty close. Yeah. All right. I always sign my name straight across on the right-hand side. That allows people to know how to display your piece. If it's straight across, then that's straight up and down. Okay. And on this particular piece, my dominant color line, the, the daisies were added later. So it was roses first. From that point to right here is the tallest part of this design. That's my dominant perpendicular line. And going across this way, this is the widest part where color touches the straight edge the most. It's wider than that, it's wider than that. So it's right there. This was my beginning cross of symmetry right here. So my first diagonal went right there. My second diagonal went right there. This stem got not quite perfect, but my leaves are on the line. As long as they're touching, it's still on symmetry. There was my first rhythm line right there. From there, right across there. My second rhythm line went right here. C's and S's are not design lines, they're rhythm lines within your painting. Okay. I used this point after I sketched this leaf to tell me where to start that stem right there. It's right on symmetry, parallel with this line. I put these daisies in on a second fire and I put them right on that line. I was so good. That's a perfect right there, perfect, perfect symmetry. I parallel this way, the edge of this one 
tells me exactly where to start that one. It's parallel to this line, parallel across. Just pick a spot, does it parallel? Oh, perfect, see I ended that leaf right on symmetry. I am so good. Dang it, you so are. <laughs> now the oh, other my. thing too is all that is wonderful, but if you don't have, look at your value scale. That's yes. I think what some the new people or painters struggle with is contrast okay. and, 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 and light, value. medium, and dark values. And always remember this, your darkest dark spot against your lightest light spot at the focal point. That draws your eye. It's strong contrast draws your eye right there. That's my darkest shadows right there around my, these, this is my focal point, these two roses. And the focal point can doesn't have to be one thing. It no, can, it no. Can, it is. It's this, this. It's two, right there. These, That's what I thought on this one. It's yeah. not the one flower. No, it's these It two. is that. And this is my darkest dark against my lightest light right here. These are white daisies, but they're painted over color, so they're pushed back to another right. plane. You put a wash over yeah. them. And yeah. I have dark here to set up this, but it's not as dark as that. So as you leave the focal point, your darks become lighter, but you still have to have good contrast. Yes. And this is a high major painting, which means most of my values are light. They're at the top of the color wheel, but there's at least five steps between my lightest and my darkest. That makes a high major painting. Low major would be dark colors, most of them, and five steps between the lightest and the darkest. But most of us paint middle, middle, middle because we're afraid to make a statement. If you don't make a statement, if you don't have the darks, you cannot see the light. Exactly. You only look as good as what you're standing next That's to. That's right. Color, color, value, And after contrast. our first painting is what you put behind your subject that brings it forward. That's yes. the best way I can say that. When you're overlapping, but you're also putting a dark flower. So that actually dimension. So oh, you got, yeah. this is the main one, then this, because you have the dark. Put sets it back, and then you got another value darker, darker, but you still have your three values within that dark. Absolutely, all of this all is of a this. part of my. This exactly. is another T. See, the T design is right. the easiest one to work with for me. Yes. Okay. And yes, this this is all my design, but this is my focal point right, right. here. These right. these two roses. But even your whites have value, and I think uh, yeah, people struggle with um, white. That's a whole nother lesson. And um, white, I, yeah, right. white reflects every color around it. If you're sitting on a green leaf, you're going to have a little green tint here. If you're sitting on a yellow background, you're going to have some yellow in there. These reflect the pink from these flowers because I put the pink there. These are more blue because that's what's in the black ground. But you still used your same colors to make that sure. white. So you have repetition of color and balance. Yeah. And, Absolutely. and look at that white and shadow. That's mm -hmm. not white, that's got shade. Oh, there's no no that's, completely white one no. any there. Well, if you look, white isn't white. It's all the colors around it. It reflects all the colors around, right. Well, and this has probably Oh, five layers of background on it. And the more color you put there, the more intense and beautiful it can get. And you paint one color over another, you get all sorts of, you can see pink in here and yellow over the pink, green. Washes. Washes, yeah. And that's, I learned that in watercolor, but you, I love doing it in porcelain as yeah. well. It just adds more depth because and richness. Because you, you make yeah. another color every time you paint over what's there to begin with. Right. So my first tint on this background probably was ivory in the lightest part, pale pink out of the flower in the middle value, and a slight wash of blue-green from my dark value. Okay. Then this value right here I call third fire depth and you can see it right there better it's got ruby mm -hmm. which is my darkest flower color mm -hmm. it's got dark green which is my darkest leaf color and it has dark blue green which is my darkest shadow color to make that intense 
it's a vibrant color, but it has all of these colors in it. It's a beautiful dirty gray. <laughs> right. It is. But it's rich. And it has all these colors, so... So that's why it works? Mix them all together. They're dark colors, and it makes beautiful, beautiful accents. So next time I come visit, we're going to get into the color wheel. Yes. And explain... Uh, How that. to choose a harmony. Yes, analogous colors, complementary, mm -hmm. split complementary. But that's a whole nother lesson. Yes. But I think this is this is good. Thank you, Stella, so mm -hmm. much. Thank you, Stella, for this uh, amazing lesson. Um, Stella also has, like a, I call it a book. It's a pamphlet on dynamic symmetry. And these are pages from her dynamic symmetry. Uh, I'll say it's a little book. It's still a book. Well, and it's a small book. It's a small book. <laughs> but it's all, everything you teach. Um, yes. And she, if you want to get in contact with her and have the book, um, she has it in print and available. I don't know how much it is. Five dollars. Wow. Okay. It's five. It's a study yes. pamphlet. Yes. And it's five dollars. Okay. It has words and shows the lines and what those lines are are showing you, you okay. know, by the illustration rather than just a picture. Right. I have words and the words sometimes. You can go back and read the words over and over, and it makes a little more sense. Well, some people are visual, some people yes. are auditory. I'm visual. That's why I love uh -huh. your example on the colored piece. But I just want to let everybody know that you can you have that have available. Words, yeah. uh, besides this video, because this it's more in depth than yeah. what we covered today. And um, it's available. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye.